Okay. Go back to sharing. Okay, perfect. So today we will deal with um, with model theory control. So control means that we we are going to uh, not evaluate a given policy, but we are going to try to find an optimal policy. And uh, model three is because we again we will not have access to all the details of the model, but we will only have access to it indirectly through trajectories. Uh, the lecture more or less is divided in two. For the first part, I will uh, uh, build upon the, the past exercise so, um, on uh, value evaluation. We will see how value evaluation works on, on the Q value function. And then we will uh, use this to uh, build the two methods, which are very similar, but I have uh, important differences between them. And one is uh, Q learning. The first, uh, actually, the first one we will deal is SARSA, uh, and then Q learning. Then most probably, then uh, one hour will begin. We will will have gone past. So after the break, we will deal uh, something slightly more uh, advanced than than SARSA, which is expected SARSA, which in a sense uh, connect uh, both of, both uh, Q, Q learning and SARSA. And then we will deal with uh, just briefly on a topic which we you have seen in the in the classes in the theory classes. And it's always a nice thing to have as a as a as a tool, which is a bit of uh, convergence uh, discussion about the learning rates. And uh, and you will see epsilon greedy epsilon um, how to change epsilon in time. Um, so let's start. Uh, for real, um, okay. Q, Q value learning. L last time we we have dealt with many ways to uh, to evaluate the value function, uh, the, the state value function, so v of s, given a policy. Um, right now we will construct on them, but we want to. In our main focus we will be uh, the control, so so the finding the optimal policy, uh, but. Um, notice, I, am, I apologize for the inconvenience again, but now I will, I'm switched back to the, to the correct notation, the sense of the notation which is most common, which is now uh, the rewards have the time after the, the action. So this is just a side note. Um, okay, for these algorithms of control, it will be more convenient to use the Q value so the state action pair uh, value and not the state uh, value so we will first see the definition again of this uh, value function and then Thank you. so the definition of the value uh, function for the state action pair is just the expected value. We for, lost you. I think we lost you a little bit. For, I uh, don't know if everything or only me, everybody or only me, but I didn't hear you for a little while. OK. Um, so the definition from the definition. OK, perfect. Let's let's go back to the definition. So um, essentially, the definition, the first definition of a value function is basically uh, identical to that of a state function but uh, so it's just the expected value of the uh, sum of, of uh, all the future reward discounted uh, starting from the position s so from the state s but now instead of always following the policy the first action is taken uh, and it's exactly that of, of which we are evaluating so the the q value for a state and action is I am in the state. I'm doing that action first regarding what my real policy is. And then afterwards, and only afterwards, I will follow a policy. Um, so basically, it's, it's the same as the value, but the first action is taken. Uh, as always, there are many equivalent formulation for this uh, value function. And one, for example, is, is just that um, the value function if you think ab about 
uh, trajectories is the expectation value of the first reward plus I'm discounted the value of where I end up. So I'm in a state S0, I do an action uh, A0, and then I will be uh, in some state S1. And from, the, uh, from there on, I, will, I, I know that the expected uh, infinite uh, future reward discounted is just the value of that state. So I can rewrite it as the first reward plus discounted value onwards. Um, then the, another formulation could be which, which connects only Q value function with Q value function is just that I'm doing, uh, I'm in a state, I do an action and I get the reward plus uh, from that state, from state S1, I'm just doing all action which, which are available with the probability given by the policy and I'm evaluating the value function for the pair, for all the pair, new state and possible action. So which is just what it's written here. So I'm uh, summing over all possible actions on the new state for the probability of taking the action, which is just the policy in that state and the value of being in that state and doing that action. So as always, we will have different formulation which, will, which are equivalent, but will be um, more useful in one or another um, case. So first thing I wanted to do to bridge last lecture with this lecture is just do pure value evaluation. So I will give a fixed policy. I will not try to optimize it. I will give a fixed policy and I want to evaluate it, but I want to evaluate it as a Q function. And I will use the third formulation, which says, uh, which says that I, which connects uh, the value function for each, uh, for a state and action with all the value functions for the new state and, and all possible value uh, actions there. So uh, this is just the, um, the class. You will see that it's the same structure as the last lecture. I will try, to, I have tried to, to maintain the same uh, structures of all the main, um, let's say code uh, parts. So it, it's easier to, to go back uh, to, from one to another. So this is the Q evaluation. And again, uh, what I want is just, I, I'm, I'm asking for the gamma for uh, the discount factor. I'm, action, I'm asking for the, for the system size. Now, while the value had the, the same size as the state, now we have a, a, a size, which is the state multiplied by the action. So I, I need uh, have to have both the space size and also the action uh, size of, of the space. Uh, I'm, I'm getting the policy because I'm trying to evaluate the policy. So I am asking it that from uh, input. Again, there is the learning rate as always. Um, now I'm, I'm defining this um, a, a zero, of X, a zero uh, matrix with the, this is just a fancy notation to say that the, uh, the size is the size of the space and of action altogether. Um, and again, I will, this is the most important part, which is the single step update. Uh, so remember what, what we are trying to do. We are trying to get the old evaluation of Q and I want to do the new one. And in TD zero, if you remember, if the, the uh, okay, to the function, I'm, I'm just getting the state, the action. So we, this was like S zero, A zero, R one, and then the new state S, S, S1. This is what we give to the algorithm as the last time. And uh, if you remember, uh, as in the last time, if the episode was, uh, was finished, then in, uh, in for example, the temple as different zero, we had that the delta was the reward plus zero minus the value in the state. We have the same thing, but instead of we will, I call it delta Q to, to differentiate it and I have reward plus zero minus the value, the pair, the, the value of the pair state and action. Okay, so it, basically you see that in a sense it's identical instead of having the value for only for the state, I have for the pair state action. And then uh, if the episode is not done, so if I am in a new state from, from which I can do actions, uh, if you remember in TD0, I had the delta was the reward plus the discounted value of the new state minus the value of the old state. And here what I have is the reward plus the discounted. 
And now instead of having, uh, having only a value in one state, I have to sum up for all possible actions and the value of the new state for all possible action. This is exactly what it's written here. I am in a new state and I have the sum of all possible action in the new state, which in, in, in Python is just done with a um, dot product between the Q values in the new state and the policy I have there. So this is the policy, so the probability for all the action there, this is the values for all the uh, state action couple. And then I uh, minus self Q values for that, for the old state, the old action. So you can see the, the parallel between them. And as always, I'm asking also, I'm, uh, uh, it, since I want to do trajectories, I'm also I added a function which uh, it says, okay, give me an action following the probability if I have uh, I, the, the, the policy if I, I give you a state, which is just a random choice uh, of, a, of the indexed uh, actions uh, while the policy is that of the state. Okay. Okay, so this was just, to, it's a bridge between value evaluation with V and value evaluation with Q. It, I thought it would be useful to have it as a first um, input. What are we going to solve today with uh, model field control? Grid word, it's a grid word again. So it's a squared word in which you can move up, down, left, right. It's a bit different from the other one, but basically it's the same. Uh, there are transition, again, you can move left, right, up, down. Uh, you cannot move outside of a box, so you will say uh, um, put. It's uh, deterministic in the sense that there is no random probability that you do strange things. If you do an action, you will end always, always, always in the same spot. If you try to, to go out or do impossible thing, you will be uh, stuck there. Now we added um, a cliff, so we, you will see then we have a region in which if you go there, you fall down and you are immediately transported to the, to the start. So uh, also the start is a new thing. We always start all the episodes in a single point. We try to move. If you go out, out of the cliff, you, you go back to the start and it, it, the episode ends only if you are at, the, uh, at some point, which is the end point. Um, okay, I'm creating the, the word, which is like this. So you can see it, it's um, basically it's a rectangular word. We will start in, in the left bottom corner and we will end in the right bottom corner. Uh, all move, move actions cost one, but if you go, if you fall from the, re, uh, from the um, cliff, you break your legs, it's, it costs 100 and you start from the beginning, okay? So do not fall from the cliff is the main uh, message of today's lecture. Again, I, I to, to make a parallel with last lecture, I tried to create a, a class of the environment because this is the general gist of how environments are done like in an open IE gym. So it's a very, very simple one. Um, you have a, an uh, init function which just says, okay, create an environment. It, it uh, uh, asks for, for, a, for a word and uh, uh, it asks for the, for the start and, and the end. Okay, um, so good. The, the shape is basically, uh, it's a very simple shape uh, as this. Um, the, the start position and the end position as are given in the beginning. Uh, and uh, you have a, a value which just uh, uh, re um, remembers the start value. And uh, of course you have a, a, a variable which says, okay, the episode is done or not. You have a reset function as always in this environment, which just uh, starts to go back to the start and, and put the, the episode done to false. And you have a, a, um, just a, a step function with an action which takes the current state and tries to do a, a new a new action. And uh, um, a, it tries to do a new, new, new position. And as I said, all moves cost one. 
but if you if you fall off of a of a square you stay put so you go back to the new state actually goes back to the old state and if uh, the word in that position is uh, as, a, as a minus so it's you are in the cliff then you go back to the start and uh, you get the, re the very negative reward which is the value which i put in the cliff which is minus under um, and uh, it just saves in the memory the position. Okay, so this uh, will. Okay. Um, to beginning, as we said we did not do any control. We want just to value evaluation. So what policy want we want to evaluate? Uh, I just put a random policy which is equal to all all places. So it's a it's a policy which is uh, whichever is the state is always that tries to do the same thing. It will never go to. Uh, at, at the end, I change it a bit. I, I apologize. This is the actual policy I'm, I'm using. Uh, we can just try to 0 0.2. And um, OK, it, uh, let's, let's just look at it here. It, basically, this is the policy for each state. Uh, I'm moving down with a probability of 0 0.2. I'm moving up with a probability of 0 0.3. I'm moving right with a probability of 0 0.45. I'm moving left with probability 0 0.05. Okay, just the policy I, I put. Um, then I create the, the environment. I create the gamma and the learning rate. And what I'm trying to do now, uh, clearly I forgot to apologize. I, Okay, it takes a, a bit. Okay, so what you see now, he has ended the episode, episodes. Now um, we did the trajectories. We, so we did 100 episodes. Uh, we initialized our uh, evaluator. Um, we, we are going through 100 episodes. We st every time we start from the start, which is bottom left. And we take the state, we take the action, uh, we see which which action so up, down, left, right correspond to the to the index of the action we took. And until the episode is done, I'm just doing new state. I get the reward. I'm evaluating the. I'm I'm giving the state, the action, the reward, the new state to the evaluator, and and so on and so forth. At the end of all, I've accumulated the values, the Q values inside of the, of, the, of, the, of the class, and I'm asking for them. So this is just now in Q values, I do have the Q values evaluated for that single policy for that word. Now we, we can watch them. So these are the Q values for being in a state on the right, for being in a state and doing the action down. So you can see uh, that if you are just above the end point, so here, the value is minus one, which makes perfect sense because if you are there and you go down, it costs one because you move, but you have ended. So that is the most, uh, like the easiest thing to understand. Then if you are close to the, the cliff and you go down, you will see that the numbers are extremely negative because of course, for sure you will pay hundred. Then, uh, it's, it's the numbers are not perfectly, um, I mean, they are not converged yet, but it's clear that if you are there, you're da doing a down action, it's a, a bad, bad thing. Uh, if you do an uh, up action, you can see that basically uh, they are negative, but not, in, uh, not uh, incredibly so, because it means that uh, essentially you, you will never have a probability of going to a cliff. Um, then if you are going right, again, it's not that, uh, not that bad. And if you are going left also, it's not that bad. Okay, so these are not converged, but just to, to present what, what it does uh, usually. So you, you will have, instead of having only one map of value function, one for each state, you will have as many maps as, as many action you can take. So for, if you want to know the value being in that position, you have actually have to compare all four um, all four action uh, maps. This was just that we, now we have done basically what we have done in last lecture, but with Q. This is what, just what we, I wanted to, to show you. Now let's go to the new part. We're going to do 
time different uh, control. So we want to find the optimal uh, policy. This is the most important thing. Why do we use a Q value instead of a, of a, of a V value? Because now with a Q value, it's very simple to find the best action in the sense that if I had the optimal value Q star of being in a state of doing an action, the optimal po policy is trivial, okay? The optimal policy is just that policy which does the best. So it, you take all the possible pairs state action and you take the one with a higher value, which is defined as here. And um, okay, so the, the, poli the optimal policy is just the action that maximizes the state action value. So this is a very simple thing to ask if you add all the proper Q, this is a very simple to ask. Okay, I know that I have four action which does the, uh, the largest value, do that. This is why one use the Q value function. But of course we do not have uh, the optimal value Q, Q star, otherwise uh, why, why are we even talking? We have to find it and we will find it iteratively. And all of the, all the uh, different algorithms are basically functioning in the same way. So it's an iteratively uh, process of, uh, of prediction of the Q and uh, making a better policy, better prediction, better evaluation of the Q, better policy, better, okay. So it's in a, in a, it, iteratively, we do a, a random guess at the beginning of the Q. We create a policy with some properties using that Q. Then we create a new estimation of the Q using that policy and then a, a new policy with that Q and so on and so forth. Okay, and at the end, hopefully, what we have as the nth estimation of Q will be a good approximation of the optimal uh, value of, of Q star. And then the policy, we can ask for a greedy policy. So we, we can ask for a argmax, uh, so the best action to do following that approximation and we, we, uh, that will be our approximation of the optimal policy. Um, as, as I said, all algorithms follow the same principle, but they will be slightly different in how to estimate the Q star function. Why are we doing uh, this? Why is it not a trivial task? It's because of the, of, of the delicate balance between exploration and exploitation. Uh, which means, which is something you also have seen in class. The idea is that um, now we want to, to exploit our knowledge to, bet, to find a, a good action to do, but we want also to do action which we do not think that they are good because we, uh, we want to still uh, uh, gather more information on the world, which at the beginning it, we have no information on the world. Um, so what the policies we want to use to, uh, to create trajectory need to balance two different drives. One is exploitation. Exploitation means uh, using our current information to do the best action possible. Uh, and in particular, exploitation means to be greedy, means that if I have, a, if I have a, an estimation QT at time T of, uh, of in the state ST, being greedy means I will do what is the best thing to do given that estimation. Uh, clearly this increase the, this is not a stupid thing to increase the future reward. You, you're, you're, uh, you, you get good reward, but the problem is that the current information could be wrong or incomplete. So in the end, you, you will be for sure, uh, not for sure, but I mean, it's very high chance that you're not doing optimally. Exploration is the other thing, which means that uh, you will do actions and you, you even think that you are doing actions which are poor, which are suboptimal, but the, the possibility is that this could lead to a, a larger uh, information gain and this, and this eventually will lead to better uh, rewards uh, than experience so far, okay? Of course, if you already had perfect information, all you do with exploration is uh, waste time, okay? So there is uh, a very simple way to understand this with ice creams and it's that uh, exploitations. So let's, let's think you have never tasted any ice cream except for watermelon and lemon. And you decide that water and lemon, watermelon is better than lemon. And you say, okay, from now on until I die, I will only get ice cream to watermelon, okay? 
I don't care that there are many other, I, I know that I prefer watermelon to lemon. So if I don't want to make any mistake, I will only take watermelon. This is clearly the worst idea of your life. But on the other point, ex exploration is like, okay, I know that I love chocolate. I always love chocolate, chocolate, the best thing ever. But since I'm not entirely sure that chocolate is like the real best, Every time I go to an ice cream, I never take chocolate. I, I, I mean, I take a different flavor. So you, at the end, you will have nuts, melon, mint, strawberry, buffo. Once I had uh, gorgonzola and, uh, and nuts, okay. But the problem is that at the end, you may find out that actually you prefer chocolate all along. Okay, so balance these two things. A simple way to balance these two things that we are, you, you, you saw, which is very common, is called epsilon greedy, which means uh, essentially you, you take a probability epsilon, which you should be uh, rather small. And with probability one minus epsilon, your action is greedy. So it means that you're doing what you think is best with respect to the current information. But with probability epsilon, you're doing pure exploration. So you do a random action between all possible random, okay? So the probability, uh, the policy epsilon in a state is with probability one minus epsilon above, it's like the, arc, the action which maximizes the Q value for the uh, pair state action. And with probability epsilon is any action at all, okay? Uh, epsilon greedy policies are very well known and studied. Um, the problem is that if you have a constant epsilon, uh, it means that you, even at convergence, even when you everything is known, you will still have an epsilon probability of doing uh, as, to work so, subop suboptimally, which is a lot. Which means that your your regret uh, grows. Uh, with time grows linearly with time, so it's it's not the best thing to do, but it's 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 the best thing at least uh, to to start. Okay, that said, let's go to the technical part of the, our first um, algorithm, which is called SARSA. SARSA is what is called a non-policy uh, TD cont control method. It's very straight straightforward. We said that all these algorithms had two elements. One element is a way to update the estimation of a Q value uh, from one step to another. And the other, the other part of this algor algorithm is a way to construct a policy. So uh, the, the way to update the current est estimation um, will be done with the time difference error in Q. So we will have, uh, we will see how we define it, but we will have a, a, an error, time difference error in, in the Q value. And each step, we will say, see that the new estimation of Q is equal to the old estimation of Q plus a small part of, the, uh, of this error, which we have just calculated with one step. And then we using this evaluator Q, we will have, uh, we, we, can, we can construct a, an epsilon greedy policy, which of course will be different at each step because the QT will be different at each step. And again, we will use what we defined before as an epsilon step. So the two ingredients of the SARSA is that my uh, uh, update of evaluation is done with a time difference error in the Q value and my policy, but uh, as a policy, I just take epsilon, uh, epsilon grid. What does SARSA need to work? It, at each step, it needs the, the state where I started from, the action I took, uh, the new reward um, I, I gain while I was in the new state and also the next action I took because I want to compare state action pair. So instead of uh, the normal TD zero with so the last time, we also need the new action. And if you put S A R S A together, it's SARSA, which is the name of the, uh, of the thing. And uh, the update is calculated as a temporal difference error uh, TD zero, and it's just this one. So you can see that uh, Delta Q is equal to uh, the reward I got plus the discounted Q value for the new state and the new action which I took, because this is the action which I took, minus the Q value of the state, the state where I was and the action I took before, okay? so. 
differently from before, I before I do this update, I also need to take a new action. Okay, I need also to be in a new state and, and take the new action. Uh, this is similar to, for example, what we did in the T V value evaluation with T zero, which was the uh, R plus gamma V minus V. And this, instead of having the V in the new state and V in old state, we have the state action pair new and the state action pair old. Okay, but there is this uh, parallel. And the update is just uh, as, as written before. So a second uh, convergence caveat, which is before we said, okay, if you do a constant epsilon, uh, it's, it's suboptimal, especially a long time. Uh, if you do a constant alpha, you will never converge. You will fluctuate around the true value. And uh, as you've seen in class, uh, actually there are, for example, two criterions uh, which ensure that the, the value goes uh, to the optimal value with probability one with infinite time, which is that uh, the sum uh, of the squared of the terms should converge, but the sum of the, of the terms of the learning rates in time should diverge, okay? This is the pseudocode, which will now translate into a code, uh, which is very similar to what we have done before with evaluation, but we will have it one step uh, further with the, with the policy. You have to uh, you have some algorithm parameters which are the learning rate and the and the epsilon, the epsilon for the policy and the learning rate for the update. You initialize Q. We initialize Q to zero, and we uh, also remember that the Q of the value of the terminal state is zero and will stay zero forever. And then you do episodes, and for each episode, you start with a, a state S, you choose an action, you take that action and you have a reward and the new state, and then you choose an action again, you also in the new state before doing the update, and then you do the update. And the update is just that um, you take the Q value and you, and you, you sum uh, the delta Q of, of it, okay? And then, uh, you start again, uh, you already took the action, so you go in the next, uh, next state, you take the action and so forth and so on, okay? Where, where this seems that there is only prediction, no, there is also uh, the fact that the policy is improved because you see we, now we, we have epsilon greedy and these epsilon greedy are constructed using the, the current Q, okay? So the prediction, so the better estimation is done in this line uh, updating the queue, but they, are, they actually control. So getting policy which are better and better is done because the epsilon greedy changes as a function of time because it depends on the current estimation of Q. Good, so now let's go to the code. This is a, a very simple uh, Python code. I, I create a, a control, uh, SARSA control class. Again, um, I just need a gamma. I just need the size of the system because I need to uh, initiate the, the Q values. I need the learning rate. I need just to create a zero matrix of the size of uh, the state multiplied by the actions. And then as always, I have one simple part with, with the algorithm, which is the single step update. Now I need state action reward, new state, new action. And what it does, it does, uh, and, and it does the, mostly the same thing as before with a slight change in the sense that if the episode is done, again, as in TD zero, I just take the new reward zero minus the values of the state action pair I was in. But if the episode is not done, I do the R plus the discounted Q value, and this is not a Q value all possible action. No, it's the Q value of the new state and the new action minus the Q value of the uh, old state and old action. And then the update is essentially the same as before. I'm just adding a small percent of this uh, Q delta Q error. Uh, if I want to get a, an epsilon greedy uh, policy i'm just adding it as a as a as a um, function sorry uh, what it does i'm asking for a random number from zero to one if this random number is smaller than probability epsilon 
do whatever you want. So it creates the probability of actions, which is flat over all the uh, action space. If not, then I have to find first what is the best value, which is this. The best value is the maximum value for the Q values for that state. Now, since Python returns only the first one, but we want to be we want to to share uh, the action in all possible action which are the same, I added the second part, which is a mask, which says that the best actions, which may be one or maybe more, is just all the uh, possible uh, actions which share the best value. So I take the Q values in that state. So it's a Q value array for all actions. And if, if any of those is equal to the best, for sure one is because I took it as that, but it could be more, then the best action is just a mask which says uh, you are not, you're, you are, you are, you are, you are not, you're not, okay? And then the probability of action is just, um, it's a mask again, but now it, it converts in floats. It's zero if you were not uh, the best value and one over the number of best action if you are, okay? So essentially this is, it's, it's a simple thing. Instead of doing, I want the best action, I am asking what, what is the best value? How many of you have the best value? Okay, the probability of among you is uniform, okay? okay. But the main point is if you have, I have epsilon probability of doing anything. And you have one minus epsilon probability of doing an action which is the best of one of the best if there is a tie between them. And then using these probabilities, I'm just taking an action, okay? Then I can also ask, okay, this was an epsilon greedy. What is the greedy policy? The greedy policy is just uh, doing this. So. Uh, I'm asking for the argmax uh, for that Q value in that state. Notice that again, this is technically wrong in the sense that I should ask for um, again, splitting the probability of ties. I do not care because right now the greedy policy means that I, I just finished. So I'm, I, I'm uh, fine with only one of the possible greedy policy. If I wanted to keep on learning, I need some exploration. So it, it was actually much better to have uh, this split. Okay. So notice that here there is this slightly incongruency if you want, but the greedy policy is defined as this. Okay. Let's do control. And then maybe we can take a break or, or, or see what, how, how it is. We're doing 2000 episodes. So we need a larger uh, number of episodes. We initialize the SARSA. Uh, with some learning rate, learning rate, some epsilon, uh, and now we also keep track of the performance. So for each episode, I'm, I'm uh, how many steps, or how, how what is the reward, the final reward of the episode, and then I do a, a, a run over the episode, and I'm as always I'm doing the same thing. But now the only difference is that I have for the state, then the action. And this, um, this, this is because the action from the SARSA is just zero, one, two, three. And the action is as a vector is, is like the, the arrow of direction, okay? So this is a, a map between zero, one, two, three to move left, move right, move up, move down. Um, if it's not done, then, so this does a whole episode and uh, takes the new states are done and it acts then I save um, the performance. So I, I save the reward in the performance. I get the new action and only then I do the single step update. So you can do the single step update with the state action, new reward, new state, new action. And then back and back, okay? So uh, first of all, I need to, I always forget and I apologize to, um, okay, it's calculating, good. So it calculates. So 2000 episodes maybe was a, a incredibly stupid idea with uh, zoom on. Uh, no, okay, good, good, good. Okay, now you can see again, um, this is what happens. So the Q values for action down are, are as such. The Q values for uh, action one are, are such, the Q value for action uh, right 
and Q values for action left. So again, you cannot see only one map of value, but you have as many maps as. Uh, but the most important thing I wanted you, I wanted to show you is this. Uh, okay, so this is now, um, this is the word above. This is the best Q for each state, the best um, value. So I'm already doing the max over the actions. And it is, it, here you can see the action. And the action um, actually says, let, if I start here, I have first to go up, then to go uh, right, and then to go down. Okay, and this is what Sarsa learned. And now something should uh, should be uh, slightly off for you because I said before that uh, here the words were um, translation tra movement were deterministic. So if you decide to go close to the cliff. Actually, if you decide correctly to go all the way right of the cliff, you should not be able to fall off. So instead, Sarsa does, um, does this thing, which goes first up, then right, and goes and then uh, goes down. And now, maybe before, uh, before um, closing to the break, we can discuss why is it. And the reason why is it, it's because Sarsa is an own policy. Uh, um, on policy method. And so it means that it's doing the trajectory. So it's following the trajectory with a policy and it's evaluating the same policy in which it's, it's following. So we are not actually, uh, we are trying to get the best epsilon greedy policy possible, but we are still evaluating that epsilon greedy policy and epsilon greedy what it does, it has a chance, epsilon chance, of doing a random choice. So actually, Sarsa says that in the, in the world of epsilon greedy policy, since you have, an eps, you have an epsilon probability of doing things randomly, you should not ever go close to a cliff. You should go up, right, and down. Why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm learning the values for the policy I'm, I'm following and my pol policy I'm following is actually dangerous close to the cliff. And here you can see that epsilon, uh, epsilon greedy function, while they are a good tool because they give a balance between um, exploitation and evaluation and ex exploration, actually with SARSA as a, a double edge because then you are optimizing that kind of policy and that kind of policy can lead to Q value, which are not uh, exactly what you want. Um, so with that, perhaps we do 10 minutes of break and then we see something which is slightly different. So it's an off policy. So where the policy I'm following and the policy I'm evaluating are two different things with Q learning. And then we, if we have time, I hope so, we will do expected SAR sign a bit of convergence. Um, okay, so I can, uh, ah, I apologize, there were, uh, yes, exactly. Um, so um, now we, we are doing uh, epsilon, which is finite. At the end, we will see that we are actually taking epsilon and we are changing in time and we will see that it, it will converge. So epsilon greedy with constant value are, um, suboptimal, and that uh, can be suboptimal in a in a very visible sense, as as, as it here. But clearly, uh, there is a way to change them on time, and which uh, again is proven to be optimal. Um, okay, let's stop. Uh, um, stop record. Pause the recording. Please um, resume the recording. It's recording now. Perfect, many thanks. Uh, so, uh, okay, so, so far we've seen that we, we went into to the Q value. We, we saw how to evaluate the Q value given a fixed policy. We saw the first method with, which was SARSA, which uh, was iteratively evaluating Q with an up, a, a time, uh, time uh, TD error, Delta Q. And then it was 
choosing a epsilon greedy function to to explore and exploit and so forth and so and so forth and we saw that it's it's a good way so it learns a, in a reasonable way to go from the start bottom left to the end bottom right um, it's a special it, it, at least with an epsilon which is fixed it's not optimal but it's still a good solution it's not doing random things now we are going to the second of this very simple class of algorithm, which is called Q learning, uh, which is off policy. So again, it's it's very simple. Uh, it has uh, a policy which you use to explore, which is again the same as before. It's epsilon greedy, and uh, exploration means that um, we. Uh, epsilon greedy, we recall, it's just that with the, as a probability epsilon, which uh, if, if, if with probability epsilon to do a random action between all it, it can, with probability when or minus epsilon, it does uh, the greedy, so it does the best action with the current evaluation of Q. Um, so what is different? Many things are similar to SARSA in the center at every step T, we store the old state ST, we store the old action AT, we store the new reward RT plus one, the Sorry, new state. We, we can't see your screen, by the way. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Uh, that is very simply because I forgot to share. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Fortunately, I was just reiterating stuff. Uh, um, so we are now Q learning, um, and uh, the idea is that again we explore using an epsilon on greedy function, uh, which is the same as defined before, and many things are the same as in Sarsa. So with every step we have old st, old at, new reward rt plus one, new state st plus one. Then we do not need to take the new action because what Q learning does is that the new uh, value of the Q value, which it does for the TD error is using the best action, using virtually, of course, the best action available for that state. So instead of being QDT of ST plus one action a t plus one so the action it takes the action in the trajectory it does something which is separate from the trajectory and it consider the value which is the best possible value given the estimation qt okay so the only difference with sarsa which is a large difference is that update of q is done with this term here why is it off policy then? Because we have a mental separation between the trajectories, which are done following epsilon greedy. So the, in the trajectories, at least epsilon, uh, in, in epsilon percentage of the action, you are doing random things. You are doing non argmax uh, over action. But in evaluation, actually, you are only uh, evaluating the new state pair, with, pair, which is not done with a probability state action, but it's done using the argmax. So in a sense, it's, it's more like evaluating something which is closer to a greedy, but, uh, but exploring with an epsilon greedy. So it has, a, it has a shift between what it's evaluating and what is used in, uh, for exploration. The two policy are not the same. Okay, this is what it means with off policy. Um, the algorithm, the parameters is as before, you have a small learning rate, a small epsilon. Uh, you, uh, you have, wait, I wanted to, let me, sorry, let me have this here. Um, okay. Um, you initialize your state, you're to, taking an action from the, from the policy, which is epsilon greedy. So this is the policy you're actually using to explore, which is the epsilon greedy. Then you take the action, you observe a new reward, then you observe a new state. 
but the update is not done with the probability given by the policy you are actually following, but it's done using this greedy uh, choice of action. Okay, so the value is updated with this max over action, which is a greedy conception of the policy you are evaluating. So the policy you are evaluated, evaluating and the policy you are following are two different things. And then you do it over and over for many episodes until, uh, until uh, the end. Okay. Uh, why is it off policy? Again, I said it, but it's very important because before in Sarsa, you were using the update in the queue using the new trajectory state ST plus one, AT plus one. So you were evaluating the policy you were following. Here you are evaluating a policy which is not exactly what you are following because you are following an epsilon greedy and you are basically evaluating a uh, greedy. But as always, the difference in uh, ah, now the host is me again. <laughs> good, good to know. Um, again, the structure of the algorithm is basically uh, very similar as before. Uh, again, it just needs the gamma, it needs the space, uh, it needs the learning rate, it needs to initialize the Q values. I initialize to zero, but it could be, be initialized to other things. Uh, with, there is also a discussion about the optimistic evaluation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I do the most basic thing and initialize everything to zero. The single update is again, extremely similar to Sarsa. I do not need the new A, so I do not require as input the new action. What I do is if the episode it's, it's, uh, end, has ended, I just do the reward I took plus zero minus the Q value for the pair state action. If the episode has not ended, I have to find the best Q value available at the new state. So I go to the new state. I look at the Q values in that new state, which is an array for all action. And I took the best. No, I, I do not take the one I will follow in the trajectory. I take the best. And then the, the delta Q is just reward, reward plus gamma. So the discounted best over the new action available minus the old Q value. And the update is exactly the same as before. So you see the structure is the same as before. This two line of code changes from being an on policy SARSA to an off policy Q learning. Again, uh, if you want a, a, an epsilon greedy policy making, you have to ask for a state, uh, you have to ask for an epsilon. And this is the same as before. Probability epsilon, do whatever you want randomly, probability one minus epsilon, find the best value, find all the action which share this best value, and then do a flat probability of the action which have the same best value. And then do a random choice in this, uh, in this probability, which is either completely flat or it's flat only for the best action. Again, I define for, uh, for uh, convenience the greedy policy, which means that once you have the Q values, once you, you, you want to, to say, okay, I just want to know what you arrived so far as a greedy policy, you will get it. And then I have to compile it. Otherwise I will as many, many times I will do it wrong. What I do now is the same I did before. So I am trying to make a Q learning control, 2000 episodes. I'm just initializing the, this new uh, algorithm here. I'm just taking track of the performance. I'm just running over the episodes. I'm every time I'm resetting the episode, every time I start with the current state, I do an action, go on. And then until the action uh, episode is, is finished, I just take a new state, the new reward. Am I done doing the environment step? Keeping track of the performance, taking the new action, looking what, what is active and the new action is in left, right, doing the single step update. Now it's not SARSA anymore, but it's SARS because it does not require the new action in the trajectory because it takes the maximum possible overall possible action it uh, has. Okay. Then again, I'm asking what, what is the, what are the Q values you arrive to? And then you can see that uh, here, this is actually similar to before, but with 
two main differences. The first one you can already see uh, vi uh, visually, which seems that there is much less variance here. Okay, uh, here there is more variance. Okay, so you can see that the, it does not seem to be a constant uh, gradient and everything. Here it seems to be more well uh, well behaved. And also you can see that something which is very cool. Uh, okay, uh, you you can see. Oh, let's let's see this. Okay, you can see that actually has learned the opt already learned the optimal uh, optimal policy, uh, and you also can also see that the value for the optimal policy is just minus one minus two minus three here. Okay. Uh, this is bit, this has not converged perfectly, but the 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 policy has. But in any case, you can at least for some of the trajectory they are correctly uh, correctly the value is correctly describing the distance between the endpoints. Okay, now something which can be a bit counterintuitive and it's uh, arised uh, it's it's from it's coming from the fact that you have. Uh, a on policy and off policy. So remember, SARSA did not find the optimal policy, but it was a non policy. So it was evaluating for the policy it was following. Q learning found the best optimal function uh, trajectory, but it actually was following a different one. What have I done? Please. Okay, I hope you're not hearing what I'm hearing. Okay, so what is this? This is just what I, I stored, so the trajectory, the performance in, in time. So uh, orange is SARSA and blue is, uh, is Q-learning. And what you can see, you can see two things. SARSA is much more consistent uh, towards a, a, a higher value, but it never reaches the highest value which Q learning does. But Q uh, learning actually has a, a much worse performance during the running time. Why so? Because both are actually following epsilon greedy policies. So both of them sometimes do random action and sometimes those random action go to the cliff. Epsilon, uh, SARSA has learned to optimize uh, an epsilon greedy so it has learned to optimize that, that policy so that to minimize those actions, those falling in the cliffs during the trajectories. Q-learning has used those trajectories and using those trajectories to optimize and find the best uh, policy, which is separate to it. So Q-learning has a much worse performance because it is following trajectories which follow the cliff but do not care about those which follow in the cliff because he knows that actually you could not following on the cliff. So he actually learn to go over the cliff. Okay, in a sense, the performance, the best performance of Q-learning is better because he has found with probability Y minus Epsilon a better optimal policy. But since they are both following, so the trajectories are given by the epsilon greedy uh, policy, SARSA is doing better because it has optimized itself for the, um, for, for the fact that you have an epsilon probability of doing random tasks. This is just to, to see the main difference between them. SARSA on policy, Q-learning off policy. Okay. Let's do uh, one more step to expected SARSA. Again, new word, but actually two lines of code. Uh, expected SARSA is a very simple modification of, to the SARSA. Uh, it's helpful because it reduces some of the variance of, the, of SARSA. Because SARSA, if you think about it, needs every time you have to have pairs of state action. So if the, st if the action space is very large, then every time if you do, if you are in a state S prime, you have, you need to, to all the time, I mean, you have too many trajectories to check all the possible actions. So a way to remove that, to say, wait, if I am in a new state ST plus prime, I'm not asking for my trajectory 
uh, where I'm going. I'm not trying to find as the Q learning the best thing I can do, but I will try to find the expected Q value following the policy I'm actually following. Okay, it's a, small, it's a bit complicated, but it's actually the only difference with SARSA and with uh, Q learning is that the temporal difference error is calculated as such. It's the reward, and that is a must. You never, uh, everybody share the reward minus the Q value for the state action in the past, that is a must. And then in, the, in between, you do not have the, the Q value for the state action ST plus one, AT plus one, which is SARSA, which it means I've looked at only one trajectory. It does not have argmax over A Q of ST plus one A, it does not mean I'm not hypothetically doing the best thing I'm doing, which is what Q learning is doing, but actually it's doing. I know that since I will follow my policy and I know that my policy epsilon, I know exactly what are the probability of doing that. I'm summing of over the policy, over the action, the probability of doing that action following the policy I'm actually following, which is an epsilon greedy policy and the Q value of being the new state if, and doing that action. So SARSA has one trajectory, one new action, and it does that. And it does that both in, in, in real, real world. So it does do, does do it in, as in trajectory and it does as an update. Q learning as a trajectory with one action, with one policy, but it actually does not care that uh, what action it is. It, it, it does the update with the best action it could do. And Sarsa does a bit of both and says, I'm a new action. I'm taking all the possible action I could take with the probability of taking them given my policy. Okay. And this is what is done here. So it's average. This is why it's expected SARSA because it's expected value. It's the average value of the Q of new state, any action, given my probability of taking an action given the state. Okay. Uh, again, how we done the uh, update once you have this number, same as before. Okay. So this new class expected SARSA T control is the same as all other classes. First, it does this initialization. And then the only part which is nice, it is different is this. If the epitope is done, I have reward plus zero minus self Q values of the pair state action. But if the episode is not done, I'm doing R plus discounted the inner product. So sum of action and product, the Q value for all the actions in that state, the policy for all that action in that state. Okay. Now, the only thing which is a bit different is that not only I need to have a get action epsilon greedy, which returns one action with the probability given by the epsilon greedy, but I need, uh, I need to have a function which returns the actual probabilities. Okay. I could have done that here since I already calculated them as a, no, 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 it's not true. Uh, I needed them. So what I do with, with function policy is take the Q, current Q values evaluator and it does the probability of the, the policy in that state given the evaluator. What it does is, first of all, I know that with probability of epsilon, I will have a flat probability. So I, first of, first of all, I take, an, an array of ones, I divided by the action size. So this is a flat probability with up to one. And I multiply by epsilon. So this is a small epsilon probability, which is completely flat. And then as again, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm taking the best value. I'm taking the best action. Let's say I have two equ equivalent actions. Those actions will be uh, divided by two. So I will have zero, half, zero, half. I multiply them by one minus epsilon, okay? And I sum both. So I sum this small uniform probability epsilon with some peaks of uh, one minus epsilon divided by how many good best choices I have. And this is my 
overall probability distribution considering everything. This is my probability distribution of the policy, uh, which I can calculate given the state and given epsilon and which goes here. So this is truly the expected value given that I am a new state and I know the Q values for the state action and I know the probability of being in that state and doing that action given uh, that epsilon. Okay, you see, essentially the same as before, but now we have three different ways of seeing. Sarsa, trajectory, I'm following a trajectory. I know what I did. I don't do the update with what I did. Q learning, I follow a trajectory. I don't care what I did. I know what is what would have been the best thing to do there. I'm considering that for the update. And expected SARS, I, I have a trajectory only one because I, I, I'm only a, a robot. I, I have so many artificial uh, uh, hands. But I know that if I were there, I could have done this many action with this probability. So I'm, I'm averaging out for my update of the Q value. How do they perform one, one through each other? In this particular case, not that differently, I apologize. But so we have an expected SARSA control. I'm doing 2000 episodes. I'm creating this, this, um, this, this uh, class. I'm taking the epsilon as before. I'm taking note of the performance. I'm doing the run over all episodes. Everything is the same. Actually, everything is the same as in QLearning because I don't need, not, do not need even the A plus A prime because the single update requires only state, action, the word, new state. What I require in, uh, more is the epsilon. Why? Because in an update, I need to create my policy. And to create my policy, I need to know what epsilon is. Okay. Uh, then I, I run it. Uh, wait, I have to run everything before. Okay. Uh, hopefully, it not take too much. Okay, again, so this right now is something which is uh, in between the two. So should have uh, less, should be on policy and should have less uh, variance than a SARSA. Because of SARSA, you, you have only one tra trajectory, you have to wait to accumulate all the possible trajectory. Here you say, you know what, I know what the expected value of where I would go is, I use that. Uh, again, however, uh, you see the, the, actual, the actual value uh, perhaps is a bit uh, better than uh, the performance bet than, than, uh, than uh, SARSA, but it's the, the basically the same. And you can also see that it does not reach the same height of, uh, of the Q learning. So again, this has learned a suboptimal Value. I the same problem of, uh, of SARS in the sense that it's, uh, it's uh, on policy in the sense that it's actually using the, for every update, the policy is following. Good. So, so far we have learned control in the most basic case for tabular systems in, uh, uh, with temporal difference in the model. Yeah, I just uh, yes. add a comment. So uh, on the book of Saturn and Barta, you actually see uh, uh, examples worked out where you can appreciate uh, the performance uh, of expected SARSA, which is better than SARSA, especially with respect to the, to the learning rate alpha, which is something that is, has not been uh, changed here. So for reference on uh, the advantages of expected SARSA over SARSA, uh, you are referred to the, to the book. Thank you. Yes, you're muted. Yes, I will say that I can hear it. I think this is what you were. Uh, yeah, exactly. You so so this is uh, alpha. It's the learning rate, and you can say that uh, well, the so with alpha is very small. It's the, the they are rather similar in performance with alpha very large. Uh, SARSA is rather thrown off and expected SARSA is actually much better. So this was, uh, I think, was uh, the, the, the point. So it, they are they're not, they are, uh, uh, perhaps I, I, 
I, I, I did not say that well, but yeah, they are not perfectly equivalent, of course. Uh, it's just that in part this particular case, it's not uh, easy to spot the difference. Um, uh, okay, last thing I want to, to deal in a very basic thing. Uh, you can read it at two, in two ways. Either I was lazy in preparing the lecture or I wanted you to give you many exercises to do home. Um, I want to briefly touch on the problem of convergence. Uh, so far, we use two constant values. We use a uh, constant learning rate alpha, which is bad, which is it's bad for a very simple reason, because the, the values will not converge, which is not something we want. Uh, and instead, they will oscillate uh, uh, forever around it. You can also see it here. I mean, uh, it took 250 episodes to obtain basically the same performance you will it, it says the same for uh, for 2000 episodes okay uh, so it, it means that after a while this is not uh, uh, this is not perfectly uh, I mean the convergence this is, could be related actually to epsilon but it doesn't matter it means that still it the conversion is not that uh, not that great uh, on the other hand uh, I mean, we, we know a solution the solution would be to implement some alpha uh, such that the sum of the squares converges and the sum uh, diverges. The problem is that uh, this is a mathematical uh, limit to infinity, and limit to infinity has the problem of being to infinity. Uh, so generally speaking, you have to, to find a balance between having something which, uh, uh, yes, it's, it's true that it converges, but it should not converge too fast. And, um, but at, at the same time, should not diverge. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> you have to find a balance. Some, some, some way of doing that, which is not the best, it's something which I just suggest, uh, and it's, it's done sometimes, is that um, you could use a, a constant alpha uh, up to some point uh, t, and then use some some function which uh, go something like that in the sense that they they decrease with some power of the time but they are constant up to some point uh, t star and then start to decrease and also they start de to decrease but the rate which we start to decrease is domain it's it's, it's uh, tunable by this k okay just this just means that it is true that this is a, this is a, 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 a proof, it's a proven fact, but if you take any, sometimes it's called the learning rate uh, schedules, if you, or scheduler, if you take any scheduler and you try to make it converge in your lifetime, sometimes it does not work. Second thing, uh, epsilon greedy policies are bad because you are doing suboptimal things and you we have seen with our own, own eyes with sarsa it learns actually the wrong uh, path the wrong uh, uh, shortest path between start and end uh, again uh, you have seen uh, in, in, in class uh, one of the possibilities just that the epsilon goes down uh, with with time one other which uh, Antonio was referring to, which is it's a more interesting part, is that you can take count of uh, every time you have visited the state action pair. In this case, it would be feasible because now I just uh, entering, when I do the episode, I just enter a new count uh, array of dimension uh, state space action, which is rather small, it's four, uh, 12, four again. And then I do a plus one every time I do in that particular couple S A. Then I have a number which indicates how often I visited that particularly uh, couple state action. And then it means that if I have not visited, I want to be as exploring as possible because I'm entering a new room. Uh, perhaps I want to know what I'm going uh, to find out. But if it is um it, it's the same as, as as i mean you can open your own fridge many 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 times but it will not change what it is but if you want to find something in in a supermarket every fridge is a new story okay um this is basically what it means how many times you're doing the exactly the same thing 
and epsilon, so the probability of doing random things, diminish by uh, the number of you visited that particularly uh, couple. You can clearly see what is the problem if you have a, a state space and action space, which is huge, then you will have visited so few times everything that this approach uh, becomes uh, not great. But then again, maybe any approach will, in that case, maybe any approach is not perfect. Um, okay, again, I have, uh, I'm, I'm proposing, because this is something which I use uh, more or less, yes, which I'm using below, uh, some kind of, of formula, which is just uh, this, this uh, here. So it decay after a time T star, uh, with a um, power slightly larger than one. Okay, let's do it. Uh, same as before, I'm doing, but now I'm first of all initializing an epsilon, which was the epsilon from the start, which will be the one starting then decay, and a learning rate from the start. And then uh, I'm initializing the SARS, expected SARS class with uh, the learning rate zero, but at every, and I'm, I'm adding a, a T star, so a, a, time, uh, a time for my point decay to start, and I'm adding a count. And during the run, I'm just adding one every time I do a step. So every single step counts one. And then when I, the step has uh, succeeded T star, I'm, changing the value, which is the internal variable of the class expect, the expected SARSA to this value, the original value divided by one plus 0 0.003 uh, to the power 0 0.75. Epsilon does the same. Epsilon is given uh, then to the expected SARSA. So if, uh, effectively, we, are, we will see the result for a, both a learning rate and epsilon, which decay uh, with this uh, kind of power after a certain decay time. What we see after a couple of seconds of staring to a, to a blank screen. Okay, perfect. We have again our usual values. We, 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 here the values say, please do not go down. We have a value uh, see, okay, you can go up, but it's not a, a, a perfectly sensible thing. This is generally speaking a good idea. And going left, it's not a good idea. And then what you see is that this is uh, Q-learning and expected SARSA performance during the simulation. You see that after some learning in which the uh, performance for each episode goes from four, minus 40, so rather a long trip to, uh, to the best value. And then it stays on the best value. Uh, and then sometimes still does different things because hopefully our epsilon is not so small that uh, it will never do anything strange because the, the sum, again, the sum should, the sum of alpha should diverge. So eventually by pure numbers, something strange should happen. So this is why uh, at least once uh, it does crazy things. And then, uh, but most of the times, it's the perfect thing. So it should have converged even if T did not go to infinite. And you, we can see perhaps that this is the best. Uh, this is the best. Yes. Is the comparison done with Q learning with fixed uh, epsilon and alpha? Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 I just took one, one which I already knew. So. Q learning. This is what this is what happens with Q learning without um, this epsilon is not decaying. So this was the old Q learning. Okay, this was constant epsilon, constant learning rate blue, which does find the best optimal thing, but the but the it's following a policy which is rather poor because it has a large epsilon, followed by SARSA expected SARSA with learning rate and uh, epsilon going to zero, which means that it has actually converged both in, both in values or should have been should have converged both in values and in policy. And you can see, for example, here 
uh, that it does find, find uh, the optimal policy, which expected SARSA with constant epsilon of 0 0.05 did not find the optimal policy. So now we had, and also at least for the, um, for the points which are, uh, which are following the main road, which is like the, the, the optimal trajectory, the values are very similar to what we expect. So it's zero here, minus one here, because you are taking, it takes one action to go uh, to the end, two, three, four, five dot zero one, because it still has not perfectly converged, but still it's much better uh, convergence. Six, zero, one, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the, the Q values have converged uh, much better than uh, for example, let's see, uh, let's take Q, perhaps also Q learning was not bad. Q learning was, uh, you see, Q learning was 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8, 9, 12, 13, 14, 13. Okay. He had some, some, uh, uh, some still some misgear. This was Q learning, which learned the optimal value, but still the, 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 it was rather fluctuating in the in the Q value. Now, learning rate going to zero, epsilon going to zero. Effectively, this is has uh, converged both in uh, policy and in Q values. Okay, with this, um, we have the basic structure of what it means to do uh, TD control for model-free systems in a tabular case, which is a very uh, basic uh, thing, but it still we have, we have dealt with uh, non unknown models. What I mean by unknown models, I mean that these incredibly stupid uh, algorithms, which we have here, and I mean like the, the, prop, the code, the, the class, if instead of having, this I, was, I said also the last time, instead of having uh, where I did I define that? Some, somewhere I defined the environment to be a grid world environment, right? Uh, but possibly two hours ago. Uh, if there, instead of, of, uh, of saying, you know what, this is the environment is a, a grid world, I will. Yes, here. If here, instead of having an environment is equal to a grid world something, something, the environment was anything which has the same basic structure of you can ask for, uh, you can ask to do a step when you do an action and you get a new state, new reward done and, and et cetera, et cetera. This should work in the same way. This is an algorithm which does not require any information of the model. It, requires only information on the trajectory. And of course it works only if the system is uh, tabular in the sense that there's a discrete action space, a discrete uh, state space. But there is nothing, um, nothing specifically tuned to the fact that this is the grid world with a cliff and maybe it will not work if the grid world was working. Either. No, you have trajectories then you put them into the algorithm and it will work perhaps perhaps it's, it's too simple to uh, to achieve convergence but i mean it should work this is what model three means okay do you have questions uh, can i make a question in on the last plot sure wait, wait. the last plot was you mean this or, or this uh no the, um, the next one this one yes yes uh, why for example in the upper left part there are some action that are uh, that seems strange that go that goes up okay um again the problem will be again a problem of convergence so this, uh, let, let's say, look at the best trajectory possible. The best trajectory possible is go up and then all the way right, okay? So two, and then 
uh, let's 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 think of a trajectory which actually goes to the uh, top left corner. First of all, you have to go up, which is what you will do. So even if an epsilon goes zero, you will eventually go there. Then the proper the the, the greedy action says to go right. Do you want to go up? Okay, you will have to wait an epsilon probability action to go up. Okay, maybe you, you're going to do it. Okay, with probability epsilon, you are going there. Then the epsilon greedy probability is saying that you have to go right. If you want to go up, you have again to wait for a chance, epsilon probability chance to go up. Okay, and then when you arrive there, you will do something and you will have a very small amount of information on what you've done. Okay. Uh, what this means it, it, it's that the, the, the frequency of update in this top left corner will be much smaller than anything anywhere else. So perhaps for the information it has achieved in this top left corner, which may be very few times of exploration, the Q value of going up it's actually the best, it's actually the best in, in all uh, four, okay? And essentially, um, in a sense, it's, it's not that surprising. Uh, I mean, uh, going up, it's not even, the, I mean, you could do four actions and uh, actually going right is clearly the best, perhaps going down, but going left and going up, it's just uh, wasting one turn because you're actually staying together. So it, it founds an action which is wrong, it's not optimal, but it's, it's, uh, it's not even that wrong, it's not falling off of a cliff. And of course, it's, a, it's an action which has visited perhaps so few times, which has not yet converged to the, to the, um, to the true value. Again, if you wait infinite time, you will, you will be, uh, you can go to, uh, to Professor Celani and say, look, I waited infinite time, <laughs> this still is the wrong action. And then he will be, the, the theory will be wrong, okay? But, <laughs> but I, and again, the suggestion from Antonio was, was perfect. If you calculate the number of, or the frequency it has visited those, um, those, uh, those state and uh, done those action, you will probably see that those parts there are absolutely um, uh, not not visited so much. Uh, the least visited of, of all. So once uh, once we we reach the the top left corner, we try to explore uh, more. And uh, this this section is given because uh, we we didn't reach the the top left corner uh, enough times to say which is the best the best action to, to pick. Okay, my, thanks. My, my current intuition of that is yes. Then there could be problems with the code and everything, but I see it. I do not think it's strange, and I think it's exactly that for that reason. You have, we have not reached that top left corner sufficiently many many times so that he has converged and he knows that there is actually a better action to do. Okay, thanks. Okay, may I? come in here and say yeah. things. So the first thing is that I accept your challenge. So if anyone <laughs> finds out that there is a trouble, I'm happy to, to discuss. And the uh, second thing, uh, uh, and the, here you must uh, have been discovering the pattern already. So every question uh, comes with an exercise. So uh, one way to get around uh, this problem is uh, rather than starting all all the time, all episodes from the lower bottom corner, you can start from random places in your uh, grid. And uh, therefore, you can start sometimes also from a, a top uh, right, top left corner. In that case, these random restarts allow you to explore force in a forced way. And therefore, your convergence to the number of visits will be much better in that case. Do you agree, Emanuele? Good. I'm done here. Can I ask? Uh, okay.
so in the sarsa we the policy is given so it's like if it's like you imply that in the environment we already we you already know the policy and we cannot do anything about it but but in the q learning it's like you are switching between policies because you don't know what oh, okay. is the fact let, let me clarify thanks for your question let me clarify something in sarsa the policy is not known the policy you can see uh, in the code or you can see it in uh, in the pseudo code it, it's the thing the policy is a function of that q you have in that moment so for example uh, the here you see this epsilon greedy so when uh, when i am at certain time t depends on the q value i have in that moment there so the policy is not fixed from beginning it's it's not fixed from from the start at the beginning the q value have some values i start with zero but they could be random and the policy will be strange then as the time goes on the policy is always different but always following this this uh, this um, formula here so the form the policy adapts to the q value okay so it's not fixed in if it was fixed from the beginning to the end then it would be it not, would not be control it could not learn to do the optimal policy but it changes in not in a strange way it changes following always the same formula which is look at the q values which you accumulate and change and store all the time and from those q values create the epsilon greedy policy okay so both things change from step to step the q value in the in the pseudocode the q value changes because you have visited new state and you have this formula here which give okay my q value i thought it was two now it's two plus 2.01 okay this is the changing q values but since the q value has changed also the policy which is constructed on the q value has changed so in sarsa both q value and, and policy change together all the time so it's not fixed from the beginning to the end it, perhaps i i miss, uh, made it sound that it was fixed what is fixed is how you get the policy from the q values okay when you have a q value you get the policy in this way, uh, way here but since this q q values here change all the time also the policy changes all the time okay this is one thing which i i, I hope it's it's in, in uh, clear if this is clear perhaps i have also another uh, distinction which i wanted to to do in uh, even more clear so is it clear this thing so that it's not a fixed policy but the policy changes because the values q values changes is it clear i hope so a bit so the second thing is what is different between sarsa and q learning is that in sarsa you have that the policy the, the q value changes because this is changes all the time the policy changes with the q values and the policy is used both for making the trajectories and both for making the update okay so you have q values change q values make the policy change the policy create the trajectory the trajectory make change the q value q value change the policy policy make the trajectory trajectory make the q value and this is go on and go forward this is sarsa which is because it why it's because uh, called the on policy um, system because it has the same policy to ex to make the trajectory and to evaluate q learning as exactly the same thing 
but with a, a small twist. So yes, the Q values change in time. The policy which are used for a trajectory, which are the same as in SARSA, change in time because they are a function of Q value. So again, you do not have a fixed policy. You're changing everything. But then the policy constructs the trajectory, but the update is not done using exactly the trajectory. It's, due, it's done using a bit of a trajectory where I was and where I got, and a bit of extrapolation in the sense that instead of doing the action I really took, I will, I will use for the update the best action I could take. Okay. But still, you started with zero knowledge on Q values and the policy was, was the worst policy ever. And as time accumulate information, the Q values get better and the policy which you are following changes. So again, it's not fixed in time. Is it, was this uh, clearer? Yeah, yeah. So the, there should be, uh, there will be a time that the trajectory of SARSA and Q learning will be the same. Yes. Uh, if you change epsilon to go smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and the learning rate goes smaller and smaller and smaller, so you are in the condition to reach convergence, the optimal policy for one and the optimal policy for the other, since they are the optimal policy, which is the property of a system and not of the method, should converge to the same. And you can see it now, it's not super easy, but again, uh, this, this is, uh, how can I do it? Um, wait, I've, I've imagined a scale. Okay, this was Q learning. This was expected SARSA with, uh, okay. Oh, I hate you. Yeah, may, may I add one thing while you search for the file? Yes, sure. Uh, so the grid world is, uh, is a bit tricky in this respect because uh, as the trajectories uh, uh, work uh, in uh, right angles, uh, there might be more than one trajectory that is optimal. So uh, it depends on whether you take the turn uh, first, uh, and then go down or you take a turn, you go down and then you go left. So from the same point, there might be more than one optimal path. And this is reflected in what you observe as well. So one has to be a little bit careful when there is a degeneracy of optimal paths that connect uh, your start point to the end point, uh, which happens if you are not starting from the lower bottom uh, uh, square, but if you start from many other point uh, up. Yes, uh, uh, something which you uh, one could do as an exercise, if, if I want to follow Antonio's example to make every question an exercise. Now, uh, as I pointed out in my code now to calculate the greedy function, the greedy policy, which is what plotted here, I'm taking the best action with an arg max, which means that even if there were ties, I, I, cho I chose only one. But you can actually try to go to the convergence and uh, select ties and plot um, both action together. And you, you would see that perhaps what it, here it looks like slightly different policies. They would be much, much, much uh, closer uh, policy because again, as, as Antonio was pointing out, if you, are, uh, if you are anywhere not on the cliff, if you go right or if you go uh, down, should be exactly the same because you are both in both cases going uh, closer one to the end point. So there should be a tie. But in, in my code right now does not in a, in, a, in, in a tie for the greedy policy does not show both of them. Uh, but you can see that they have converged at least in most of the, in most of the states and in all of the states composing the optimal trajectory from top down, uh, bottom left to bottom right, they have converged to exactly the same point. Okay. This here and this here.
are there more questions it's a bit late so if you have please do but otherwise uh, yes so in the in the expected sarsa the the spectrum of policies is also Tell me again, sorry, in, huh? in the expected sarsa you have to have a spectrum of policies in the spectrum of policy what what do you mean by that because in the sarsa you, the policy is just how to update q oh, yeah. wait by by policy i refer to uh, the action to take given a certain state so to me the policy are uh, the arrows here it means that if I am in this position, the policy is the probability of taking that action right instead of taking the Russian left. So here what I show is the optimal policy as converged for the two case, expected uh, SARS on the left and Q learning on the right, which means that uh, I'm showing the action to take if you are in a state. If you, by a policy you mean what you do to change the update i i don't think it generally called a policy and uh, there is a there is a, the, the only difference between q learning and sarsa is in how you define the delta q so this update of a q value um, but the the values should converge so the values for the q of the uh, of the um, couple state action in every state for each action with convergence uh, cr uh, criteria and with infinite time they will converge to the same number again the values as you seen here you can see the second uh, plot from up you can see that they are actually not that far off in the sense that uh, if you arrive to the end, you can see that there is a zero and it's zero in, in both cases. Then if there is a one, which is good because it means that it, it, it takes only one action to go there, which is probably one. Then it's a two if you are at distance two. Then it's, there is something close to three in most of the, of most of the places which are distance three. So again, it's not at convergence yet, but the two method will converge with probability one if given enough time uh, with decaying alpha and decay epsilon to the same values. They have not converged yet because of uh, finite time and et cetera, et cetera. Was this in any way part of a, a, an answer to your question? I take it as a almost no, but <laughs> uh, perhaps if you have, uh, if you want to continue, uh, please write to me and uh, any any of you. Uh, I I will try to answer to mail uh, um, Slack and everything as quickly as possible. And sometimes it's very useful if you do uh, specific question, also broad question for me. The sense that I know what I completely uh, was of point of speaking, and for you because perhaps you do not need to spend two hours uh, releasing an election, and I will answer in two minutes, and maybe it will be clearer with a one-to-one call. -one uh, so we went late, so I apologize to everybody. Um, uh, as always, if you have question, write, uh, ask, and everything. And thank you very much. I will stop recording. I Perhaps should have done it uh, before.